वेलकाम एगेन टूडे उल डिसकस सालफार बेस रिएजेंट्स इन अर्गानिक सिन्थेसिस सो दे आर टूडे उल कवर जुलिया अलिफिनेशन मडिफाइड जुलिया अलिफिनेशन हुई इज माइल्स रिअरेंजमेंट सालफार इलाइट्स को चाइस रिएक्शन कोरे उटार अलिफिनेशन अल्सो लस एंड रिएजेंट उल डिसकस कार्बन सी डबल वन O2 C double bond S conversion this with this reagent. Thio acetal formation Kore Sibak reaction. Chugleb elimination we'll discuss the olefin formation. Sulfoxide elimination higher also olefin is there. Uh, reaction of DMC lanar. So this is negative charge on the uh, alpha carbon of the SO bond. So first we'll discuss Julia olefination. The reaction named after the French chemist Marc Julia. In 1973, this reaction was discovered. The Julia olefination, also as Julia lithography olefination, is the chemical reaction used in organic chemistry of phenyl sulfones with aldehydes or ketones to give alkenes. After alcohol functionalization, uh, reductive elimination using sodium amalgam or samarium iodide. The utility of this connective olefination reaction arises from its versatility, its wide functional group tolerance and the mild reaction conditions under which the reaction proceeds. The classical Julia olefination is generally highly stereoselective and favors formation of the trans alkene. So this is very important, the trans alkene is formed and the general reaction is that a sulfonyl compound first will be deprotonated with n-butyl lithium, you get an anion there and that will react with the aldehyde to give the beta hydroxy sulfone and that OH, OH will be protected with R3X, so O become R3 and this acts as a living group. After NAH treatment, this trans alkene is formed. So this is trans. So here a few steps are there. First the treatment with n-butyl lithium to generate the anion, then the reaction with aldehyde and then uh, activation of the hydroxy group for the living group ability and after that final elimination with NaHg. Also this process is a radical process here, this step sodium amalgam. So what could be the reaction mechanism? The initial steps are straightforward. The phenyl sulfone anode reacts with an aldehyde to form the alkoxide. The alkoxide is functionalized with R3X to give the stable intermediate. We have already seen the n butyl lithium minus 78 degree centigrade THF generate this negative charge here and this reacts with aldehyde to give the alkoxide which is treatment with acetic anode generate the acetate. And in the step 2, this proceeds through a vinylic radical species elimination of the living group from vinylic radical gives the desired product. So here the metal first reacts with the sulfonyl group and the radical is formed then this bond cleaved and after cleave you get a radical here and this radical can take another electron to generate the anion and this anion then E1CB like E1CB type mechanism the elimination happens and you get the E alkene. Alternatively that this elimination can happen first also if there is a hydrogen then this elimination can happen and then you get this one. This on treatment with NAHG can also give this uh, olefin, trans olefin. So the first elimination after that this SOPH group uh, removal. Even though the carbon is not configured or conformation is stable, it will prefer an arrangement with the R groups further apart that will lead to the E alkene. So there are two possibilities this if you rotate along the CC bond you get these two uh, conformers. 
So these are conformers. And this one will be stable because here uh, the negative charge is trans with the acetate and this one after elimination you get this trans alkene. On the other hand this conformer where this negative charge anion and O acetate are at the same side this has to give another rotation so that negative charge goes to the trans and when we give the rotation then this R dash becomes same side of the R and after elimination you get the C cell K. So, this is very important in Julia olefination because of the though they are con two conformers are possible, but because of this steady region the trans alkene is forming as the major product. Trans selectivity rises with increased chain branching about the newly formed double bond. Like here there is no branching, so the E z uh, ratio is 80 is to 20, there are two long chains are there. Now, if you put branching in one side, the selectivity increases to 90 is to 10. And if you put branching at both sides, branching at both sides, it gives a selectivity greater than 99 is to 1. So, so branching, branching is favors branching is favors trans selectivity. This method has been applied in many natural products one example is synthesis of bryostatin 2. So, here there is an aldehyde and here sulfonate group is present and this is the active methylene group where it can be depotented with n butyl lithium. Also there is a branching here and with acidic anhydride DMF treatment followed by magnesium HGCl2, you get the single olefin product and with this trans geometry. And this uh, condition other protecting group TBS, PMB groups they are untouched and this can be further converted to the intermediate biostatin 2. This was published in JAX 1999. The, the modified Julia olefination, the replacement of phenyl sulfones traditionally used in the classical Julia olefination with certain heteroaryl sulfones profoundly alters the reaction manifold. Like here, this is benzothiazole, so Bt is benzothiazole, and this SO2R, it is better to write like this SO2. So, there is active methylene group you can see and this is pyridine, this is phenyl tetrazole, phenyl tetrazole and this is uh, tardbutyl tetrazole. So, defined instead of phenyl they are can be defined uh, heterocyclic motif and all of this, this is very common, this one, the C double bond N is present uh, in all these cases. So, we will see the importance of this one in the mechanism. So, mechanism of the modified Julia olefination, so here this benzothiazole group is present with the sulfonyl and this is the active methylene group which can be depotented with LDA using the anion anion is reacting with the aldehyde and there are two possibilities the anti and syn and we will see that in this case both anti and syn are forming and which can of course give two different kind of products one is trans another is cis. And in the modified Julia olefination smiles rearrangement is happening that is the importance of the C double bond in bond. So, here this anion is reacting with the aldehyde R 2 CHO this alkoxy compound. And now, if you see this C double bond N is there and this one is a negative charge and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, 5 member ring formation will be facile, 5 member ring formation. Though this is aromatic, but this aromatization will regain again that we will see. So, uh, this ring is not aromatized here and now this 
oxygen is reacting with this carbon, so you get this intermediate. After that, aromatization again will gain, and the benzothiazole group will migrate to oxygen here. So you see here OBT is there, and this is a Mm, this bond is breaking. So, benzothiazole is not in the part of sulfonyl group now and a lithium charge is there and this will eliminate in C2 to generate this 2 hydroxy benzothiazole. So, these are the byproduct SO2 will be formed and alkenes electrons. So, this is important that what we have seen that here no requirement of further uh, protection or further derivatization of the alkoxide. So, this is important in Julia olefination we have seen that the alkoxide you have to treat with acetic anhydride so that it will act as a living group, but when you functionalize this pH with uh, heterocycle a replacement of the phenyl with heterocycle that is a modified Julia olefination you do not need the another living group. So, here the itself this benzothiazole OBT will act as a living group and you get this olefin. A mechanism for equilibration between intermediate syn and anti beta alkoxide sulfon diastomers via the retro addition is thus enabled for the reaction of metallated benzothiazole sulfones with carbonyl compounds. And the energy barrier to smiles rearrangement for the anti isomer is presumably higher than the corresponding syn isomer due to the eclipse gas arrangement of R1 and R2 in the appropriate transition state. So, this you will see in the next slide. And indeed, more facile base mediated elimination of syn beta hydroxy benzothiazole sulfones as compared to their anti congeners has been noted and this tells that unreasonable not an unreasonable explanation for the aforementioned cis selectivity. Benzylic benzothiazole sulfones react with alpha bands unsaturated aliphatic aldehydes to give E alkenes with trans selectivity. So, if alpha bands unsaturated even alpha beta unsaturated aliphatic aldehydes are, are there then also it gives the trans selectivity. So, this is the mechanism that two are formed first we are showing for the anti. So, this is the anti alkoxide is forming and after that this benzothiazole takes orientation like this. And this one, so this one the R2 aldehyde you can see in this one, if we see this Newman projection, this R1, R2, they are facing steric repulsion because they are in the cis orientation. When this O oxygen attacks to this C double bond end bond, this intermediate is forming, this process will be slow for anti because of the steric repulsion. On the other hand, when it the rearrangement happens, so this one, this SO2 Li when which uh, forms like this, then this will be in the R1, R2 will be in the trans orientation and this will give the E isomer. So, this process will be very fast because the steric repulsion is no more in this uh, intermediate. For the syn case, so syn will be like this geometry and after that the 5 member ring formation you have to draw like this and in this case in this case R2 is CHO is the aldehyde when this 5 member ring is formation then the R1 and R2 are trans to each other. So, this process will be very fast. On the other hand after rearrangement this R1 and R2 comes to the scene. So, this process will be slow because now steric repulsion is increasing and this will give the Z alkene. So, both possibilities cis and trans alkene is possible and depending on the substrates you get this selectivity. Examples like here the pyridine sulfonyl group is present and here if first it is n-butyl lithium and lithium bromide followed by treatment with this long chain aliphatic aldehyde and here so with long chain aliphatic aldehydes.
here you get major Z, 90% Z and E only 10%. Also, if you treat this intermediate, the alkoxide, this is the trans or anti. This one, if you treat with another aldehyde, para nitrobenzaldehyde and LDA, so what will be possible? So this one can possible that this can eliminate by this smiles rearrangement and you get this product and this product is formed in 40 percent EZ 98 is 2 and this anion can also react with the aldehyde and after that you can get this product para nitro phenyl group present and this product is formed in 60 percent EZ ratio 90 is to 2. So, both uh, elimination as well as the reaction with aldehyde, they are both competitive process, that is why you are getting a mixture of products. And this was in the PhD thesis, University of Glasgow. And one application of this one also with this alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde, here this uh, Benzothiazole sulfonyl group is there and this is the active methyl L group here LDA will generate an anion and this will react with this and here you get the EZ91 is to 9. So, this is the preferred E geometry. This was published in Parkinson's 1999. Reversibility in rapamycin synthesis. So, here we will see the how the substitution is giving defined product. Suppose here if you have this beta branch alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde and with this one benzothiazole sulfonyl group also there double bond is present and some branching is present but further. So, here what happens you do not get so much selectivity with different metals this is the disilagen. So, lithium uh, hexamethyl disilagen you get 29 is to 71 EZ mixture with sodium disilagen you get almost equal amount 43 is to 57 and with potassium you get more Z selectivity. Now, so this is the product and this is the product and you see this bond is forming here. So, this is the one, so this is the one, this is the first case this double bond is forming. Now, if you focus on this double bond formation, so for this double bond formation you have to use this substrate. So, here you see the branching is closed with the sulfonyl group now and there is a also alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde, this is actually diene. And in this case, the selectivity is good. Suppose with lithium uh, hexamethyl disilagen, you get 68 percent yield and the E selectivity 95 percent. On the other hand, sodium cases you get 78 percent. So, lithium prefers, prefers trans selectivity. and potassium prefers Z selectivity there. And also you can see if the branching is close to the sulfonyl then the preference for the E selectivity is more. Some example, so here this sulfonyl benzothiazole is present and this is the aldehyde and after that with lithium hexamethyl disilagen. So, we told that lithium prefers the um, E selectivity with this solvent minus 78 degree to room temperature you get 62 percent yield of this product with this E olefin. And this E olefin can be further converted to the natural product in benzamide. This was published in Bulletin of Chemical Society Kim France 1993. So, sulfur elides now we will talk, sulfur elides have numerous applications in organic synthesis among them dimethyl sulfonium methylide which is unstabilized and dimethyl oxo sulfonium methylide stabilized are extremely used in organic synthesis. 
<laughs> these reagents are called Kore-Chayabersky reagents, like this one is unstabilized sulfonium elide. So, here you have positive charge on sulfur and negative charge on CH2, that is the carbon, and stabilize sulfoxonium elide because there is oxygen now with sulfur. So, this is stabilized and that is why this is soft actually. This is soft nucleophile. We will see for this defined kind of reaction happens and this is hard nucleophile because this is not stable. So, this is reactive. Preparation the elides are generated in situ by the deprotonation of sulfonium halides with strong bases like here trimethyl sulfonium iodide with sodium hydride DMS you get this. So, what will be the mechanism? Because this sulfur is positive charge this is activated methylene group and with base strong base this can be deprotonated and this will be regenerating structure. Dimethyl oxosulfonium methylide known as Kore Chayabersky reagent is a valuable alternative to dimethyl sulfonium methylide and can be generated from trimethyl sulfoxanium iodide. So, this is the trimethyl sulfoxanium iodide and with NaH DMSO you get this one. So, this is regenerating structure. The first stage of the reaction of a sulfur elide with an aldehyde or ketone compound consists of the nucleophilic addition. The resultant adduct then proceeds intramolecular nucleophilic substitution to give an epoxide in case of alpha beta unsaturated compounds based on the nucleophilicity of the elide either epoxide or cyclopropanation could be formed. So, this we will see depending on the nature of the this hard soft different product could be formed. So, first we will discuss sulfonium elide which is hard and with carbonyl compound then the epoxide is formed. And also you can see this is actually one carbon homologation because this carbon is coming from the uh, this carbon from this elide. So, one carbon homologation is happening. So, what is the mechanism? First, this nucleophilic addition will happen to the carbonyl compound. After that, elimination of dimethyl sulfide, dimethyl sulfide, you get this epoxide. So, some examples like here, if you use a C2 symmetric sulfide and which in reacted with the benzyl bromide and so this will be the chiral reagent and this is C2 symmetric as we can see here. And this after uh, sodium hydroxide this anion will generate. So, this is the anion and after that it will react with the aldehyde and elimination will give this trans epoxide. So, this is important because of the steric also like Julia olefination we can see here also the trans product is major. So, when two phenyls are present you get 75 percent isolated yield trans is 90 to 10 and 90 percent E for the major enantiomer. So, this is chiral, this also C2 symmetric. With CF3, if you put the CF3 group in the phenyl ring, then you get little less yield, but better selectivity 95 is to 5 and 91 percent E for the major diastomer. And if you put a methyl group that is the paratolyl group, you get 66 percent and 90 is to 10 and 95 percent. The enantiomer selectivity gets increased when you put a methyl group to 95 percent. This was published in JOC. With alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound, depending on the hard or soft region, you get different products. So, this alpha beta unsaturated ketone can be trans or cis 
transient or cissoid, this side also possible. And when you put this hard nucleophile, it gives one two addition product. So in alpha beta unsaturated ketone, we know for the Grignard addition also and cuprate addition, the Grignard adds to one two because Grignards are hard nucleophile and cuprate adds to one four fashion. So similarly here also because this is the hard center and this is soft center, the double bond. So, hard nucleophile will prepare to react with the hard electrophile that is the carbonyl group and you get the epoxide and the double bond which will be untouched. On the other hand, if you put the soft nucleophile, it gives one for addition product. So, cyclopropanation, so here double bond is reacting and carbonyl group is untouched. So, this is very selective and the mechanism is like this, first the one for addition will happen with this oxosulfonium methylide, then the uh, cyclopropanation will happen. So, this is cyclopropanation and DMSO will eliminate, you get this cyclopropanated carbonyl compound. So, examples, so because this is acidic, this and not only sodium hydride, simple organic base like guanidine. So, these are guanidine can also be used to deprotonate this one. And after that, it is reacted with this alpha beta unsaturated ketone in acetonide solvent 60 degree centigrade, you get this cyclopropanated carbonyl compound. And because of this geometry, this is trans and this is also trans. So, this geometry is retained in the cyclopropanation reaction. Also, this allylic alcohol can also be used which with MnA2 it is getting oxidized in situ to the alpha beta carbonyl compound. So, with MnA2 you can get the alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. And with this also uh, similar condition you get this product. So, this is the yield. Suppose this uh, substrate if you use with a furyl group and this side phenyl carbonyl, then two equivalent of this uh, MTBD that is the base you have to use and substrate um, is to enone. So, in the enone case you get 81 percent yield after two hours reaction. And when alcohol is there with extra MnO2, you get 76 percent yield 1.5 hours. So, yield got a little bit reduced. Also, both side heterocyclic, you get 76 percent yield, and this case, alcohol case, you get 66 percent. Also, phenyl, methyl, you get 73 percent yield, and in this case, you get very less yield 39 percent. And when CO2 amic group is present, then you get 25 percent yield, the yield gets reduced because this is acting as a EWG. So, that is a problem and the yield also get reduced for this case. And when a sulfonyl group is there, the yield again got enhanced, you get 72 percent yield. So, this was published in Sinlet 2007. So, this is an important method for cyclopropanation, this method is very simple and the reagents are commercially available and very useful way for the cyclopropanation of alpha beta unsaturated ketones. Also asymmetric variance is possible and this is also stabilized gelide, stabilized because there is a carbonyl group and this is alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde. So, this chiral secondary amine, so this is chiral secondary amine. And this will react first with the alpha beta acid aldehyde to generate an aluminium ion. So, aluminium ion will form first, and then the conjugate addition after that uh, the cyclopropanation will happen. And this geometry you can see here R and CH are trans, so here also they are trans, and a newly generated chiral center is forming. This is newly generated chi chiral center. So, cyclopropanation along with a newly generated chiral center. And this method only point to equivalent of this catalyst is enough to give these products in chloroform at minus 10 degree centigrade. When this is propyl group, this is phenyl then you get 82 percent yield 
and 97 percent diastomeric excess and 99 percent enantiomeric excess. So all chiral centers, relative as well as absolute configuration is very high. Also, if you have a O-allyl group here and parabromobenzyl also you get 98 percent diastro selectivity, 99 percent E. Also, this is phenyl and this is also phenyl case, you get 97 percent diastomeric excess, 99 percent enantiomeric excess. So, this process is very good giving the products in high diastomeric and enantiomeric ratio. So, this was published in JOC 2007. Now, we discuss rearrangement of sulfur elide. So, rearrangement sometimes possible if you heat it and this negative charge can uh, react here. In this case, it is reacting here, this bond is breaking and you get this is the 1, 2 rearrangement and this is actually 3, 2. So, for allylic system, allylic sulfur ely 3 to sigma topic rearrangement is formed because in allylic case instead of reacting here it reacts at the double bond and the double bond is migrating here and this bond is breaking you get this product. Suppose this is bis allylic system bis allylic. Now you react to ethyl bromide to this sulfonium salt and after sodium hydride treatment you get this elide and this one now if it reacts in the 1 to fashion so 1 to means it will react here so in this case this bond is breaking you get the 1 to on the other hand 3 to case this will react here so this is 3 to and this is 1 to 3 to case you get this product, this is the quaternary carbon atom here and in 1 to case the, you get this. So, in allylic system this will be of course major, 3 to is favorable. Now, we discuss Corey winter olefination, it is named for the American chemist and novelist Elias James Corey and the American Estonian chemist Ronald Arthur Edwin Winter. This method gives an effective route for the transformation of 1 to diol to alkenes. So, we have seen the osmium tetroxide gives alkene to diol, but Corey winter elephination you will get the diol to alkene. So, it is reverse osmylation. The cyclic thiocarbonate formed from 1 to diol and thiocarbonate dimerazole undergoes reaction with phosphorus reagent via a syn elimination to afford alkene. So, this is the syn elimination, osmylation we have seen that it is the syn dihydroxylation. So, here also the syn elimination. It is stereospecific, a trans dial gives trans alkene, while a cis dial gives a cis alkene as the product. Suppose here if you have a diol and generally the phosphides are used and with this activated uh, C double bond S, so here C double bond S is there and now the elimination will give the olefins CO2 HCl and this one phosphorus sulfur bond will form and R is equal to chlorine or imidazole. So, what is the mechanism? The mechanism involves formation of a cyclic thiocarbonate from the diol and thiophosgene or thiocarbonate dimidazol. Thiocarbonyl dimidazol. The second step is image treatment with trimethyl phosphide which attacks the sulfur atom producing H double on P O M E whole 3 divine by the formation of a strong P double bond and leaving a carbene. This carbene collapses with loss of carbon dioxide to give the olefin. So, this is the reaction first if this diol has to be treated with this, this can be imidazole or chlorine. So, this is the thiocarbonate dimidazole. Then this intermediate will form after elimination of two molecules of imidazole, cyclic thiocarbonate. So, this is cyclic thiocarbonate. Now, this phosphide will tre react with the sulfur and you get this intermediate which after elimination of this you get a carbene. So, there are few steps are there, then the carbene 
reacts with this phosphite again to generate this double bond after elimination after elimination so this is seen elimination after seen elimination you get the olefin and this intermediate which collapses to carbon dioxide and uh, phosphite uh, alkyl phosphite so this is very important in this reaction carbon dioxide is eliminating that is also driving the equilibrium and here also this is also stable so this also fast because this p double bond s bond is forming actually so examples this is cis diol cyclic system and with this um, thiocarbonyl dimidazole you get this z this was published in tetra and letters and this is the phosphine so you have to use a phosphine and thiocarbonyl compound also here this is also cyclic system cis diol is there and this is the thiocarbonyl compound this is the phosphite and you get this double bond see so this process also is very efficient and it was published in tetra done now we will discuss loss and reagent so in loss and reagent you can see four sulfur atoms is present and also a four member ring is there Lawson reagent or LR is a chemical compound used in organic synthesis as a thiocyan reagent. Lawson reagent was first made popular by Seven Olof Lawson. Lawson reagent was first made in 1957 during a systematic study of the reactions of iron with P4S10. Reactivity order of LR towards hydroxyl and carboxyl groups are alcohol is better than amide that is better than ketone that is better than esters. So, hydroxyl groups are the most and esters are the least reactive functional groups among hydroxyl amide ketone and esters. So, what is the mechanism? Now, Lawson reagent in solution is in equilibrium with a more reactive dithiophosphine elide because this ring in solution it is breaks and you get this one dithiophosphine and this will be with the elide this is elide and this is the active that is reacting the reaction with the carbonyl gives rise to thiooxaphosphatin intermediate so this one is reacting with the carbonyl so this sulfur is attacking to carbon and this oxygen is attacking to phosphorus so you get this uh, four member ring formation and then then cyclo reversion so this cycle will break and interestingly you see first this sulfur carbon is bond here sc bond is forming and now sc double bond form so s double bond c forming here and after elimination of this oxygen goes to phosphorus and sulfur goes to carbon you get your carbonyl compound is got to thiocarbonyl now the driving force is the formation of a stable p double bond o bond in a cyclo reversion step that resembles a portion of the mechanism known as the Hutig reaction. So, in the Hutig reaction also we have seen this kind of mechanism may be five member ring is forming there and this is a chemical review which tells about this reagent. Example simple carbonyl compound can go to thiocarbonyl with Lawson reagent toluene reflux condition. This is an thioketin. So, this thioketin if you treat with MCB way, now this ketin if sulfoxide is forming, now if you treat with Lawson reagent, you are getting this, three member sulfur ring is forming. So, what will be the mechanism? Now, first this will go to this LR that oxygen will be replaced by sulfur. Now, what will happen? This sulfur sulfur A will be formed, so this will react like this. So, you get a sulfur sulfur as well as this carbon reacting with one sulfur here both sulfur this carbon is bonded with both sulfur. So, that is the possible this way and now this is forming. So, what could be the possible? The possible is that this one 
double bond is migrating to here this bond is breaking and this is attacking here so you get this one this was published in jax 2004 also if you have a, this kind of um, dicarbonyl compound aromatic systems with Lawson reagent, you get a dimerization. So, this is very interesting. Dimerization is happening along with this thiocarbonyl formation. This is in reflux condition, you get, of course, 30 percent yield, and this was published in hetero atom chemistry 1999. Thioacetal formation also is an important reaction of sulfur based reagent in analogy for the formation of acetals from alcohols and acid treatment of aldehydes or ketone with thiols. In the presence of an acid produces a thioacetal. Thiols are sulfur analogs of alcohols and they can react with aldehydes and ketones in the same manner and produces thioacetal. The catalyst is used a Lewis acid such as BF3 or zinc chloride. In contrast to acetals, thioacetals are stable in both aqueous acid and aqueous base. So, this is very important for acetals, they generally cleaved with acid, but thioacetals are very stable to acid as well as base. So, they are very useful protecting group for carbonyl compound. They use usually to protect carbonyl group and differentiate two different carbonyl groups, this will be carbonyl groups in the same molecules. Like here, an aldehyde at ketone is reacting with this two sulfur atoms are present with BF3, you get this thioacetal, or this is called dithion also, 1,3-dithion. So, this thiol is reacting with BF3 and you get this thioacetal or 1,3-dithion and this is the, the possible mechanism, this thiol is reacting with the aldehyde first to generate this intermediate, then the protonation happens, deprotonation, again alcohol will be protonated to get the, so that water will be eliminated, this oxygen is getting a positive charge. Now, this double bond will form, carbon sulfur double bond is forming and this is interesting, if we show this mechanism, this is actually 5 endo dig and this according to Baldwin's rule, this is disfavored, but because of the sulfur systems, sulfur is heavy atom, so this is uh, not favorable according to Baldwin rule. Because of this heavy atom, this process might occur, the cyclization 5 endo dig cyclization and after that, uh, this proton is deprotonated by water, you get this 1,3-dithion. Kore-Sivak reaction, kore reaction provides an effective route for the transformation of aldehydes to ketones. The aldehydes can be readily reacted with thiol using acid catalyst to afford dithioacetal. The acidic hydrogen of the acetal can then be removed by base such as n-butyl lithium and the carbon stabilized by vacant d orbital of sulfur atom can be alkylated in high yield. The resultant thioid ketal can be hydrolytically keep in the presence of mercuric salt. So, this is the usefulness, not only the protecting group, this is also an usefulness to convert aldehydes to ketones. So, that is the kore sivak reaction. Here, this dithion, this hydrogen can be deprotonated with butyl lithium and this is stabilized because the sulfur atoms are present back in d orbital, stabilize the carbon ion. And this carbon ion can be reacted with electrophile, also alkyl group, other electrophiles and then mercury oxide treatment gives back your carbonyl. So, this is ultimately, this you can get from aldehyde. So, ultimately aldehyde is converting to a ketone. This is the method, kore sivak reaction. So, mechanism is same that you will be deprotonated and this anion will be stabilized with the sulfur. There is positive charge with there. And R3x, you can get uh, this alkylation. Also, this can act as a nucleophile like epoxide. This is uh, terminal carbon is reacting, it giving this intermediate. This is a published tetrahedron. Also, it can react with carbonyl compound. 
So carbonyl compound it can react and generate a olefin here with titanium reagent. You get 44 percent yield of this diene, and this diene is forming where the this group is here. Methyl group is here. You get 29 percent yield of this diene. This was published in JAX 1997. Chogev reaction. The Chogev elimination is a chemical reaction that involves the elimination of water from alcohols to produce alkenes. This intermediate is xanthate. This is an old uh, chemistry. This it is named for his discovery of the Russian chemist Alexandrovich Chugev, 1873 to 1922, who first reported the reaction sequence in 1899. So this is important. Carbon disulfide, sodium hydroxide. Followed by treatment with methyl iodide, you get this xanthate ester or xanthate. After heating, you get this, so high temperature you have to put, then you get elimination of this. So, this will be eliminated. So, what will be the mechanism? This carbon is actually this carbon here, which is connected to the oxygen. And if you see the six membered transition state is forming. So, if you see this C double bond S is activating this hydrogen, beta hydrogen, so the elimination will happen. So, this is reacting with this one, and now this bond will break, double bond will form, and this carbon oxygen bond will break, and it will go to this carbon. And after that, you get this olefin and you get this also CH SCH 3. So, this is the side product of this reaction. Sulfoxide elimination, the compound containing an activated CH bond can undergo reaction with diphenyl or dimethyl disulfide in the presence of base to give substituted sulfide that could be readily oxidized to sulfoxide. The latter readily undergoes elimination and heating to give alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. Like here, 2,6-dimethyl cyclohexanone treated with OH minus the anion and then this disulfide is reacted with this one, you get this alpha sulfinylation after oxidation you get this sulfoxide. And now after heat, this will eliminate and you get a olefin here. Now lastly we will see reactions of dimcyl anion. So this is the uh, anion of DMSO and this was first discovered by Kore. So, the pK of DMSO is 35, which leads NADMSO to be a powerful bond state base. Dimcyl anion is very reactive nucleophile also, not only base, it is also reactive nucleophile and can be used for various synthetic applications. The sulfur substituent can be easily removed by reduction of thermalic examples, like here long chain aliphatic bromide with treated with this one, dimcyl anion you get this sulfoxide and after heating you get this elimination. You get the elimination and you get the double bond. So, this is an, a method to generate uh, alkyl bromide to olefin with uh, dimcyl anion. And if you react with an ester, so this is ester. Ester, what will happen? You get first this reaction here and you get this intermediate. And interestingly, if you put this intermediate with zinc acetic acid also or aluminum mercury also, this reaction will happen. You get this ketone. So, what will be the possible mechanism? Possible mechanism is that first this metal will come here gives an electron. So, this we have already seen O minus. Now, this 
single electron uh, will migrate to one to this carbon and that to this sulfur. You get this one. A radical is formed here. And this radical is stable because this is alpha to the carbonyl. Now, because this one is activated carbon, if you put sodium hydride and methyl iodide, you can put two methyl groups also. This is very interesting that you convert this to this with this minus. And now if you put two equivalent methyl iodide, you get these two methyl groups and after treatment with zinc acetic acid, you get this. So you convert an ester to a carbonyl compound with a substitution. You, you bring an isopropyl group here. This was published in JOC 1989. So today we have seen uh, sulfur based reagents. First we have discussed Julia olefination. So in Julia olefination you have to react a sulfonyl compound with an aldehyde or ketone and then you have to uh, add an electrophile so that the living group generally the acetic anhydride is added and after sodium amalgam treatment it will generate a trans olefin. So we, the mechanism is mostly radical process and though radical can conform are possible but because of the steric uh, repulsion this alkyl groups uh, or two substituents will be trans to each other and you get the trans olefin. Now in the Julia variant, the benzothiazole motif, also pyridyl tetrazol motif also has been used and the major difference is the smiles rearrangement will happen through a 5 member ring formation which collapses and after that you get a olefin. An interesting thing that you do not need the uh, alcohol uh, activation like we have seen the acid uh, in, in formation in Julia case here the elimination happens and 2 hydroxy benzothiazole sulfur dioxide and olefin will be your products. And in this case because in the anti case this formation of this uh, uh, smiles rearrangement will be sterically hindered because two uh, groups come close in the cis orientation so they will feel the steric repulsion. But after rearrangement they become trans and that becomes more stable. So that is why this uh, products depending on the substituents gives either E or Z simple aliphatic aldehydes we have seen the Z isomer major and if you put branching and if the alpha beta unsaturation is there then the trans geometry is formed. Also in one cases we have seen that depending on the potassium or lithium cases you can get different products depending on the substitution also. So generally lithium favors the trans geometry product and potassium favors the Z geometry products. Then we have seen the kore chaiboxy reaction. So, in the kore chaiboxy reaction, the hard nucleophile we have seen this uh, sulfonium elide and also oxo sulfonium elide is an soft nucleophile. So, these cases we have seen the alpha beta unsaturated cases, the hard nucleophile, the sulfonium elide is reacting as the carbonyl carbon giving the epoxide. On the other hand, with oxo sulfonium elide, you get the cyclopropanation. Then we have seen the loss and reagent, loss and reagent as method for the conversion of carbonyl compound to C double bond S. This method is very useful and uh, defined carbonyl compound can be converted to C double bond S form. Also we have seen the core winter olefination. In core winter olefination the diol has to be converted to olefin and the diol is treated with an phosphite and also a activated C double bond S compound generally uh, phosgene or thiocarbonyl dimidazole is used and which gives the um, olefin and this method is very stereoselective the trans diol gives the trans olefin cis diol gives the cis olefin. Then we have seen the thioacetal formation and this method is very useful for converting aldehydes to carbonyl compound and that is the kore sivak method. Also it is an useful method for the alkylation that you can treat with different uh, electrophile and you can get the different products. And lastly, we have seen the Chuge olefination. In the Chuge olefination, a xanthate ester will be formed, and which under high temperature gives the olefin. And in the dinsyl anion, we have seen that this 
Dimsal iron is very effective base as well as nucleophile, simple alkyl bromide, it can be treated with dimsal iron, then the olefin will form. And in the A star cases, we have seen that A star will give an intermediate which after zinc acetic acid treatment, it gives the substituted ketone. Also, this alpha carbon can be alkylated so that more substitution can be bring to this uh, ketone. Thank you.